intelligence report this morning that the, the Tanzanian troops are preparing with the modern Chinese arms requested by Dr. Apollo Milton Obote to come and uh, uh, attack Uganda. This is the message which I received this morning. And I am not afraid at all, and I'm sure that we will welcome them. And I know that some of the Tanzanian army officers and the men, I know them very well, and uh, they know that if they come, we will welcome them as member of the uh, uh, East African community. <laughs> <laughs> The members of the Uganda Army and Air Force decided to take over from the civilian role because of the, the last arrangement which were made by the Dr. Apollo Milton Obote to disarm the whole tribe of Uganda, except his own tribe, Langi and Achodi. And also, that is the point which brought all these problems. Have you been well treated, Madam Obote? Yes. What is how, your... How's the children taking all this, Mrs. Bethany? You've got the children yeah. here with you. How are you? They're all right. And you? I'm, I'm all right. Have you heard from Daddy? What's your name? Takaki. And yours? Akela. Do you feel safe now? Well, I'm a bit worried and scared. Yeah. But I'm being well looked after now. You have a military escort here around yes. the house all the time? Yes. But what... you do still feel a bit worried, do you? Oh, I'm, I'm a human being. Yes. Wouldn't you be worried? Yes. yes. What yes. Uh, do you think is going to be your personal future now, Madam Abate? I have no idea. Would you like to join your husband? I don't know. It depends on a lot of things. What when you things? heard the news that your husband might be returning to Uganda, what was your reaction? Did you want him to come back or did you not? Did you want him to stay away for the time being? Well, I'm not in a position to know what is going on. No, but uh, I'm not informed about everything. No, no. But, but he it's himself difficult said to that make he, an assessment. Yeah. The nineteen seventy one overthrow of President Obot in Uganda stands as a pivotal moment in the country's history, marked by political intrigue, military upheaval, and deep seated divisions. To understand the complexities of this event, we must delve into the intricate web of factors that contributed to its unfolding. Number one, political context. Uganda's political landscape in the late 1960s and early 1970s was fraught with tension and power struggles. President Obote, who had risen to power in 1962 after Uganda gained independence from British colonial rule, faced opposition from various factions within his own government. His administration was characterized by authoritarian tendencies, accusations of corruption, and growing discontent among the populace. Number two, military dynamics. The Ugandan military, like many institutions in post-colonial Africa, was deeply politicized. Tribal affiliations and personal loyalties often influenced military appointments and promotions. This led to factionalism within the armed forces, particularly between soldiers hailing from different regions of the country. Idi Amin, a former ally of Obot and the army commander at the time, emerged as a central figure in these dynamics. Number three, internal strife, the rift within the military became increasingly apparent as tensions simmered between soldiers from northern Uganda, where Obot hailed from, and those from the West Nile region, where Amin held significant influence. Politicians exploited these divisions to consolidate power and eliminate potential threats to their authority. 
division within the Ugandan army, fueled by years of political manipulation and tribal favoritism, played a central role in the 1971 coup. Soldiers from the northern and west Nile regions found themselves pitted against each other due to deep-seated animosities fostered by politicians since Uganda's independence in 1962. The suspicion and rivalry between President Obot and Idi Amin further exacerbated these tensions. A proposed Ilango Development Master Plan, advocating for the promotion of soldiers and officials from the Lango subregion, highlighted the extent of tribal favoritism within the government. This climate of division ultimately led to the failed attempt to eliminate Amin, triggering the spontaneous coup that toppled Obot's regime. The events of 1971 underscore the destructive consequences of political manipulation and tribalism within the military, leaving a lasting impact on Uganda's history. Number 4. Failed arrest attempt. The catalyst for the coup came in the form of a failed attempt to arrest Idi Amin. Orchestrated by President Obot. Amin's growing popularity and perceived ambition posed a threat to Obot's hold on power. However, the plan to detain Amin backfired when soldiers loyal to him intervened, sparking chaos and confusion within the military ranks. Number 6. Opportunistic coup amidst the turmoil, disgruntled soldiers seized the opportunity to stage a coup, taking control of key military installations and ousting a boat from power. The coup was not meticulously planned but rather emerged spontaneously as a result of the power vacuum created by the failed arrest attempt. Number 7. Amin's reluctant ascension, initially hesitant to assume the presidency, Amin eventually succumbed to pressure from his supporters, who saw him as their best chance for protection and stability. Amin's rise to power marked the beginning of a dark chapter in Ugandan history, characterized by authoritarian rule, human rights abuses, and economic instability. Number 8. Aftermath and Legacy The aftermath of the coup saw Uganda plunged into a period of political turmoil and repression under Amin's regime. Thousands were killed, tortured, or displaced, and the country's economy suffered greatly. The events of 1971 continue to loom large in Uganda's collective memory, serving as a stark reminder of the dangers of political manipulation and military intervention. In conclusion, the 1971 overthrow of President Obot in Uganda was a complex and multifaceted event driven by a combination of political machinations, military dynamics, and internal strife. It reshaped the course of Ugandan history and left a lasting legacy that continues to impact the nation to this day, how Idi Amin ascended to power. As tensions boiled within the Ugandan army, the events at Malaya Barracks on the evening of January 24, 1971, unfolded into a chaotic and decisive moment in the nation's history. Lieutenant Colonel Augustino Akwangu, the commanding officer of the Malaya Mechanized Reconnaissance Regiment, MMRA, initiated a clandestine meeting of senior officers under the guise of routine proceedings. Little did those officers know that they were being lured into a trap designed to neutralize any potential resistance to the planned arrest of then Army Commander Major General Idi Amin, as approximately 200 officers assembled inside the officers' mess, Akwangu, accompanied by his adjutant and other loyal soldiers, locked the doors, effectively imprisoning them. Meanwhile, soldiers from West Nile, sensing treachery, gathered and prepared to defend themselves against perceived threats emanating from the Ecoli dominated leadership. In a desperate bid to arm themselves, the West Nile soldiers, led by Corporal Moses Gala, launched a daring assault on the heavily fortified armory. Gala ingeniously utilized a beef opener to start an APC engine, ramming it into the armory door, breaching its formidable defenses. With access to firearms secured, the soldiers swiftly apprehended their fellow comrades who had been primed to execute the arrest of Amin, effectively foiling the initial plot. In the ensuing chaos, Akwangu, the architect of the failed plan, faced the wrath of the enraged soldiers and was brutally assaulted, succumbing to his injuries later at Malego Hospital. His adjutant, Lieutenant Ngarombo, 
managed to evade capture, fleeing to Tanzania to escape the brewing turmoil. The events at Malaya Barracks marked the culmination of years of simmering tensions within the army, exacerbated by political intrigue and tribal rivalries. What began as an attempt to eliminate Amin morphed into an unplanned coup, as soldiers from West Nile rallied to defend themselves against perceived threats of marginalization and persecution, amidst the confusion and uncertainty the soldiers turned to Amin. Recognizing him as a figure capable of providing leadership and protection in the tumultuous aftermath. Amin's reluctant acceptance of their plea for leadership paved the way for his ascension to power, as the soldiers, fearing reprisals and imprisonment, sought refuge in his authority. In the aftermath of the coup, Amin's proclamation as president and the issuance of the infamous 18 reasons for the ousting of President Obot solidified his grip on power, ushering in a new era in Ugandan history fraught with authoritarian rule and political instability.